this video, I'm going to show you how you can customize your copy of Windows and completely transform the way your Windows PC looks and feels. You will learn how to install a custom mouse cursor, how to put a video as a desktop wallpaper, how to change the color of your taskbar or even make it completely transparent, how to customize your start menu, and how you can have a better right click menu and add any application or folder to it. To be honest, this is probably the best part of this guide, so make sure you keep watching until the end. Hopefully, your computer will go from this default boring look to something like this by the end of the video. And with that being said, remember to subscribe, leave a like and comment on the video, and let's get started with the ultimate Windows customization guide. I'll be using Windows 11 in this guide, but you can follow the same steps for Windows 10 and you'll get the same end result. Now just remember that every person is different. What I may find to be a great tweak to Windows, you might find useless. So don't feel forced to apply every single customization in this guide, but you can still follow along and choose what is best for you. Now, before starting, we need to make a system restore point in case we break something in Windows and we need to go back to a point when it was working. Now, if you don't know how to do that, just head down to your search bar, type in restore, and press enter and you'll get to this window. You'll need to verify that system protection is on for your C drive. If it isn't, click on configure, turn on system protection, then hit apply and OK. And when that's done, you can create a system restore point and give it a name. I'll just call mine custom windows and then I'll press enter. Now that the system restore point is created, let's start with the guide. So the first thing we're going to be doing in this guide is we're going to be changing the mouse cursor. Now, why do we want to change the mouse cursor? Well, maybe we just want something different. Maybe we want something other than the default. Maybe we want our mouse cursor to be unique. Or maybe we even want to choose something that just might be easier to see. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, first off, you're going to head to DeviantArt and you're going to search for Windows cursors. Here you're going to find a whole bunch of different Windows cursors that are created by artists and you can choose anyone you like. But what I'm going to be using today is this free cursor pack that's created by a user called Jepri Creations. And you'll need to create an account with DeviantArt and log in and then you can download it by clicking on this free download button. Once it's downloaded, I'm going to head over to the folder. I'm going to extract the contents and and this particular cursor pack has a light and a dark version. I prefer to use the dark version. So I'll open up the dark folder, head into the cursor folder, and then you'll find this install file inside of it. Next, you want to right click on install and then click on install in the context menu. Click on open and your mouse property should open by itself, which is this little window. If it doesn't open, just head to the search bar and search for mouse properties and head to the pointers tab. What you want to do from here is you want to click on the drop down menu and then select the cursor pack that you downloaded. I'll select it, click on apply, I'll click yes on this prompt, then I'll click on OK. And now you can see we have a unique and a cool looking mouse cursor, something that's different from the default Windows cursor. Now, just a reminder, links to everything that I use are all in the video description. And then you'll also find a link to this customization folder that I put together, which has all the materials I'll be using as well as all the programs. And it also has the internet shortcuts or the shortcuts to the web pages here where you'll be able to download all of the latest versions of the software. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to replace the desktop background with an animated wallpaper or we're going to use a video as a wallpaper. Now, why would we want to do that? Well, it changes the look, the feel and the vibe of our PC. It just improves the overall aesthetic. So how are we going to do that? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to download Lively Wallpaper. I'm going to scroll down on this website. You can get it from the Microsoft Store if you want to, but I'm going to be using the standalone installer in this guide. Once it's finished downloading, let's click on the little folder to open it up. And before we install this, Head to this PC on your local disk C and here I want you to create a new folder and we're going to call it tools. 
we're going to be using this folder for all the apps we're going to install throughout this video. Once the folder is created, let's head to the downloads folder and then run the lively setup. We can install this for all users and the installation is really straightforward. You're just going to accept the agreements. But when we get to this stage where it asks us where we want to install it, we're going to click on browse and we're going to select the tools folder we just created on the local disk C. Click on OK. Next, uncheck these two checkboxes. Click on next again and then install. When it's finished, uncheck this checkbox as we don't want to start it up yet. Click on finish and then head back to the tools folder. You'll see the lively wallpaper folder here. In this folder, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it wallpapers. Now, the next thing we need is we need a video to put as our desktop background. What I'm going to be using in this guide is this close up view of a classic turntable playing music and it kind of looks like it's on a loop. So I'll click on free download to and I got this video on Pexels, by the way. If you don't know what Pexels is, it's a website where you can download free stock photos, royalty-free images and videos that's shared by creators. So if you're looking for high-quality photos or videos, Pexels is a great place to find them. So next, we want to copy the video we just downloaded into this wallpapers folder that we created. So to do that, I'm just going to open up another instance of File Explorer. I'm going to hit to Downloads. Then I'm going to copy this video file into the wallpapers folder that we created. We can rename it if we want. Let's just call it record player. So now that we've done that, head back to the lively wallpaper folder. Scroll down until you find the lively application. Double click on it to launch it. Now when lively wallpaper is open, you'll see that there are some preset wallpapers that you can use. If you want your desktop to look like matrix, you can do that. If you want to have some raindrops on your screen, you can do that as well. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be clicking on add wallpaper and then we're going to open file. Then we're going to navigate to the C drive, to our tools folder, lively wallpaper, and then we're going to find the wallpapers folder that we created and we're going to choose our record player and click on open. You can fill these out if you want. I'm just going to leave them blank. Click on OK. And now it's already set as an active wallpaper. You'll see if we close lively wallpaper. Here we have a beautiful video of a record player that's on repeat, on loop. Now you can head back into lively wallpaper. If you right click on the wallpaper and head to customize, there are some sliders you can play around with here. If you're not happy with the colors maybe or the brightness, you are able to change some of the settings here if you like. Another thing is if you go up to the active wallpapers, you do have some placement methods that you can choose. If you only want it to be displayed on your primary monitor, if you have two screens, you can choose to have it spanned across both screens or you can duplicate the wallpaper on both of them or multiple monitors. Now, the last thing about lively wallpaper you need to check is you need to head to the settings and then you need to head to the performance tab and once you're here, you need to look at this application's full screen setting and make sure that it's set to pause. If this isn't set on pause and you do use your PC to play games, this might impact your performance as the wallpaper will keep running in the background while you're gaming. If your PC performance is important to you, make sure this is on pause. You can exit out of lively wallpaper. It'll then minimize to the system tray if you do need to get back to it to change some additional settings. But there we go. Now we have a cool looking moving desktop background and you can get creative with this. You can put whatever you want on your desktop background. If you want the ocean, if you want waves, if you want a car driving, you can get creative with it. It's your PC. You do what you want. Let's head into the next section. What we're going to be looking at now is customizing the taskbar, the start menu, the system tray and the explorer command ribbon which is this bar that's on top of the file explorer. Now, what do we want to change about them and why would we want to change it? Well, for starters, in Windows 11, you can't move the taskbar easily. There are no icon labels on the taskbar, which essentially means there are no text on the labels. I personally don't use that, but there are some people who find it very helpful. Overall, we're just limited in how we can customize and manage the taskbar in Windows 11. Now, moving on to the start menu, you might want to change it to something that looks more like Windows 10. 
or Windows 7, you might just prefer using a start menu that resembles the look of some of the previous versions of Windows. Personally, I think the Windows 7 start menu was the best and that's the style of start menu that I'm going to be going for in this video. Moving on to the system tray, it has been redesigned in Windows 11 the network and the sound has been combined in one command center. Now, personally, what I do like about the Windows 11 system tray is if you hover your mouse over the sound icon, you can adjust the volume by scrolling up or down on your mouse wheel. Personally, I think that's really cool. And with the customizations we're going to make, we are going to lose that functionality, but we are going to put it back. And that's even for Windows 10 users. Moving on to the Explorer command ribbon, this has also been redesigned in Windows 11. Now some people just can't get used to using the new command ribbon and that's why we're going to be changing it. Unfortunately, we are going to be losing the tabbed file explorer, so that is a downside. Let's have a look at how we're going to be changing all of this. First off, we're going to be using a program called Explorer Patcher. To download it, just head over to the right side where it says Releases, then click on the Release. Scroll all the way down until you find the epsetup.exe and download it. We're going to click on open file and you might get a white screen or your computer might look like it's freezing for a little while. Just give it some time. It's just busy installing in the background. Once it's finished installing, you can see we immediately have the Windows 10 taskbar look and the Windows 10 start menu look. This almost completely looks like the Windows 10 taskbar. So let's start by clicking on the start menu. You'll see it's still the Windows 11 start menu and it still opens up in the middle of the screen. So to fix that, we're going to right click on the taskbar and then click on properties. This is Explorer Patches properties. And then we're going to head to the start menu tab. Here it says position on screen center. We're going to click on that and then click on at screen edge. So you'll see if I click on the start button now, we have the Windows 11 start menu, which is aligned to the left of the screen. In the Start Menu tab of the Explorer Patcher Properties, you can change the Start Menu style to Windows 10. And what I also like to do is where it says Corner Preference, I prefer to put this on rounded corners with a floating menu. Now if we open up the Start Menu, you'll see it's floating, which means it's not touching the taskbar or the left side of the screen. And it also has rounded corners. These are the only changes to the start menu I'll be making for now. Later on in the video, I'm going to be using another software to make some more customizations to the start menu. So stick around for that. Now, looking at the taskbar, the one thing we can do now if we wanted to is we can unlock the taskbar and we can move it anywhere we want on the screen, just like you were able to do in previous versions of Windows. I'm going to keep mine at the bottom of the screen you're welcome to put it wherever you want. Now, if we head to the taskbar tab in the Explorer Patcher properties, you can go back to the Windows 11 taskbar if you wanted to. We also have the option to show or hide the search button and the task view button that we have here next to the start button. I'll hide both of them. And we can also choose to automatically hide the taskbar if we wanted to. Another thing you might have noticed is the taskbar buttons now have labels and they aren't grouped anymore. I personally don't like this, so I'm going to head to the setting that says combine taskbar icons on primary taskbar, where it says never combine. I'm going to change that to always combine. You'll see the labels are now removed and the icons are grouped together. Now you'll see the system tray resembles the look of Windows 10, but you do have this control center icon, which still brings up the Windows 11 menu. So if you wanted to keep this, you could. We can change this by heading to the System Tray tab in the Explorer Patches settings and we can disable the Control Center button. After disabling the Control Center, you'll need to restart your File Explorer. The next thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be hiding the Show Desktop button, which is this little button next to the notification icon. Now, here we have some more settings that we can change with regards to the System Tray icons. For instance, if you right click on this network icon, and click on open network and internet settings it takes you to the windows 11 settings layout for network and internet you can change this to open any one of these two windows personally i like the network and sharing center and control panel so that's what i'll be choosing 
So it takes me back to the control panel network and sharing center. And then we can also customize the system tray icons even further. For instance, if I click on the network icon, it brings up the Windows 10 network menu. I can change that back to Windows 11. I can change it to control center. I can change it to any one of these options. Personally, I'm going to keep it on the Windows 10 flyout menu, but you can also set it to some of the windows in control panel. With the sound option, it's also defaulted to Windows 10. You can put this to the Windows 7 style menu if you like. I'm going to keep it on Windows 10. Same with the clock. Right now it's set to the Windows 10 flyout clock by default. You can also change this to the Windows 11 clock or even back to the Windows 7 clock if you like. And then I'm not currently on a laptop, but you can also change the battery settings to the Windows 7 battery menu. And if you wanted to, you could also change this language switcher to resemble the look of Windows 10. That's it for the system tray. Let's have a look at the file explorer command ribbon. So I'll head over to the file explorer tab and here I need to click on register as shell extension and then under control interface where it says Windows 11 command bar, I'm going to switch that to the Windows 10 ribbon. So if I open up the file explorer, now this command ribbon resembles the look of Windows 10 and a lot of people prefer to use this rather than the Windows 11 layout. One more thing we can change in the file explorer tab of Explorer Patcher is we can disable the Windows 11 context menu now. The context menu is the right click menu. If I disable it and then restart file explorer, if I right click, you'll see this is the Windows 10 right click menu. I'm not going to be using this. I'm going to be using another software later on in the video to have an even better right click menu and one that I can make my own changes and upgrades to. Now heading to the other tab in Explorer Patcher, there are some things you can do. For example, if you wanted to disable the rounded corners for application windows, which are these rounded corners, you can do that here. And you can also prevent the control panel links from being directed to the settings app. So what this means is if we go to the control panel, if I click on system, it's going to take me to the Windows 11 system page. But what if you wanted the old Windows 10 or Windows 7 system page? Well, you can check these settings. And when you click on these items in control panel, it'll now take you to the old Windows 10 versions of it. Funny to see that it has the Windows 10 logo on the right here, but I am definitely running Windows 11 home. Now, lastly, in the Explorer Patcher properties, if you head to the About tab, you can export these settings in case you need to format your computer and you don't want to set up everything manually again. You can just import them to your new installation of Windows. Next, we're going to make some additional changes to the taskbar and we're going to use a program called 7 Plus Taskbar Tweaker. You can get it from their website. Click on Download. Once it's finished, we can open the file and install it. I'm also going to be changing this destination folder to the tools folder that we created earlier on the local disk C drive. Click on install and then we can leave these settings checked and then click on finish. Now I forgot to mention this earlier, but you don't need to install Explorer Patcher if you're running Windows 10. You only need to install it on Windows 11. If you don't have Explorer Patcher installed on Windows 11, then 7 plus taskbar tweaker won't work. We're going to use 7 plus taskbar tweaker to make some additional changes to the taskbar. I'm not going to cover every single setting. What I'm going to be using it for is I'm going to remove the extra gap between items to save some space on the taskbar. You can decombine items on mouse hover and show labels. Now what this setting does is if you hover your mouse over a group of icons, it expands them and you'll see it has labels next to each of the icons. Now these aren't permanent labels. In Windows 11, we can use Explorer Patcher to give us permanent labels. In Windows 10, if you want permanent labels, you can go to the taskbar settings and then you can select never from the combined taskbar buttons drop down menu. This setting will give you permanent labels in Windows 10. Personally, I don't use this, so I'm just going to switch that off. What you can do in 7 plus taskbar tweaker is you can use the mouse wheel to cycle between taskbar buttons. What this setting does is if you hover your mouse on the taskbar 
and you start scrolling with your mouse wheel, you're going to start opening the different windows that's open on the taskbar. Now, I don't use this. What I do use 7 Plus Taskbar Tweaker for, and this is probably the main reason I use it, is to have easy control over the volume. What I can do is I can either choose the taskbar or notification area. I'm going to choose the taskbar. And if I hover my mouse cursor over the taskbar and scroll up or down on the scroll wheel of my mouse, I can now change the volume really easily. I really like this feature. The next setting that I'm going to change is what happens if I double click on an empty space on the taskbar. Here I'm going to select show desktop. So if I do double click on this empty space, it closes all the windows and shows me the desktop. I can also choose what happens if I middle click on an empty space. Usually I like to choose the task manager. So if I do a middle mouse click on the taskbar, it quickly opens up the task manager. Some other additional settings here is we can hide the show desktop button. Now we've already hidden this with Explorer Patcher, but if you're on Windows 10, you haven't hidden it yet. So you can do this here. And if you want, you can display seconds on the tray clock. There are some talks about Microsoft releasing this in a future update. So you might not need to use third party programs to get this functionality. Personally, I don't use that. And then lastly, you can also reserve empty space on the taskbar. The last change I want to make to the taskbar is to make it completely transparent, like I mentioned earlier. And to do that, I'm going to be using Open Shell. To download it, I'll head over to the Releases tab on the right, and then I'll scroll down until I find the Open Shell Setup EXE. Once it's finished downloading, I'll click on Open File, and we're going to go through the installation process, accept the terms, and then here we're going to need to change the location to the Tools folder that we created earlier. Just make sure to create a new folder here and call it Open Shell. We're going to click on Next, and then on Install, and then we're going to click on Finish. Now, if you click on Start, this is the screen you're going to see. What we're going to do first is we're going to go to the taskbar tab. We're going to select customize taskbar. Here you can change the taskbar to any color you want. We're going to be making it completely transparent. So I'll be clicking on this taskbar opacity and then I'll change it to zero and click on OK. Now we have a completely transparent taskbar, which I think looks really nice. Now I also want to mention there is a program called Rounded TB which you can use to give the taskbar rounded corners if that's something you'd like to do. I won't be using that in this video, but if a taskbar with rounded corners is something you want, then you can check out Rounded TB. Next, I want to customize the start menu even further. If we click on start now, you'll see we have the basic open shell start menu, but I'm going to be replacing this skin and I'm also going to be replacing the start button. I'm going to be downloading this Windows Orb Pack by LeePat uh, on DeviantArt. Like I mentioned earlier, you will need to create an account with DeviantArt to download anything from the website. I'm already logged in and I'm just going to click on free download to download this Orb Pack. I'm going to open the folder and then I'm going to extract it to the tools folder that we created on the local disk C drive in the open shell folder. And here I'm going to create a new folder called start buttons next i'll click on extract and there we have all the different start buttons that we can choose and we're going to select one of them in a moment i also want to download this windows 11 style start button that was created by a reddit user called imnota i'm just going to click on the three little dots and then on download i'll open the download folder and this file i'm going to copy to our tools folder into the start buttons folder that we created inside the open shell directory we can also rename this to Windows 11 Start Button. Now to change the Start Button, we're going to right click on the Start Button and then click on Settings. This will open up the settings for the Open Shell menu. We're going to go to the Start Menu Style. Here we're going to click on Replace Start Button. And then we're going to click on Custom. We're going to pick an image and you can choose whichever one you like. I like this Windows Flag New and I can show you what that looks like. I think that looks really good, but I'm going to be going with the Windows 11 start button as I'm currently running on Windows 11. Now, if you go into the advanced button options, if the start button looks too big or too small, you can change the button size. And I recommend changing it to something like 40 or you can either change it to 45 if 40 is too small for you. 
or you can just leave it as is. Now that we have a custom start button, let's change the start menu. Head to the next link in the description, which is the Fluent Metro skin by Bonzi Bud, and that's what we're going to install next into OpenShell. I'll head over to the right by the releases tab, scroll down until I find the zip file. I'll download that, open the folder, and here we're also going to extract it, and we're going to choose our tools folder, then open shell, and then skins, and here we can click on select folder, next extract, and now it's extracted with all of the other skins that come pre-installed on open shell. After extracting the skin, right click on the start button and then click on exit. We first need to exit open shell or else it won't detect the skin. Now there's a good chance your start menu won't be working right now, so just open your file explorer, head to your open shell folder and then find the start menu application. Double click on that and open shell will be running again. Next we can right click on the start button, click on settings and then we can head to the skin tab and here we have some different skins that come pre-installed on open shell but what we're going to be using is the fluent metro skin now by default this is what it looks like but we're going to be making some changes to it so i'm going to head back to the settings of open shell and i'm going to show you what i usually change on this skin so there are a bunch of different settings that you can change and you can go through this on your own and set it to your preferences what I like to do is, is to give it a smaller search box. I also, I also like to hide the search box hint text. Next, I'll scroll down until I find the smaller right hand text under the main menu. And I also like to check compact sub menu. I like to select the less padding around the main menu and thinner padding between items. I like to give the shutdown button a thin border. The menu border style I put on floating. Next I hide the user picture. I change the scroll bar's appearance to modern and I like to use smaller arrows. Next I head over to the controls tab and here we can choose what clicking on the start menu does. So a normal click on the start button will open the open shell menu and then if you hold down shift and click on the start button it opens up the normal windows start menu. Next, let's head to the main menu tab. And here I like to put the max recent programs to zero. And then I also like to change the width of the panes to 35. And then I'll click on OK. So now you'll see we have a smaller and more compact and more familiar and easy to navigate start menu. Something that resembles the look of Windows 7 and the user friendliness of Windows 7. Now we have this massive space which has nothing here but if we do go to all programs we can pin programs to the open shell start menu so you can pin your most used programs to this list so you have a way of launching them quickly. Now just lastly if you do want to change the color of this Fluent Metro skin you can do that by going back into the settings under the skin tab and you can change it to a custom color or in my case I'll change it to dark and as you can see it has now changed to dark mode now with that being said that is it for the start menu let's move on to the right click menu finally we're going to be making changes to the right click menu in Windows also known as the context menu now why would we want to make changes to the right click menu we might want a better right click menu than what Windows can offer with more options and we might want to customize it to suit our personal needs and to make using Windows even easier. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to download Shell by Nilesoft. Once it's finished we can open the file. Now we can go through the setup wizard, click on next and once again we're going to install this to our tools folder to Nilesoft Shell. Click on install. So let's have a look at what has been changed by Nilesoft Shell. Firstly, we can easily access terminals. We have some file management options. We have access to editors if we are developers. We have this go to menu where we can easily go to certain folders on our computer. And we can also open up the control panel from this right click menu. We can launch the run box and we can quickly and easily head to different settings in Windows. Now what I want to do is 
I want to add even more to this right click menu. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to download Notepad++. I'll click on download which will download the Notepad++ installer. To install it I'll click on open file and once again going through the installation process we're going to install this to the tools folder and this is very important. So it will be installed to tools Notepad++ and we can run Notepad++. The first thing I do in Notepad++ is head over to the settings tab, then preferences, dark mode, and I put it on dark mode. Now, after installing Notepad++, head back to the tools folder, head into the shell folder, then right click on shell and click on run as administrator. Here, you're going to click on unregister. You're going to be prompted and you're going to click on OK. And once that's done, head to the ultimate Windows customization folder that I linked down in the description, head to the context menu, and then head to this folder that says my Nilesoft shell config. Copy this shell file into the tools folder in your Nilesoft shell folder, and then overwrite this existing shell file that you have here. Open the Nilesoft shell again, and then click on register. Click OK on the prompt. Once that's finished, if we open the right click menu, you're gonna see that there are more options on this context menu. Now, it might not make sense right now, but let's go a little bit more in depth. Go back to the tools folder, into the shell folder, and then open this shell file with Notepad++. In this file, you're gonna see that there are a whole bunch of items added into it. These are items I already added to the shell config file. What this type syntax means is it doesn't matter where you right click on Windows, whether it's on the taskbar, whether it's on the system tray icons, whether it's on the desktop, whether it's on a file in Windows, these items will always show up. Next, the title is what it will be called on this list. Next, the image is the icon that will be shown. So you'll see that some of them don't have icons right now. We'll fix that in a moment. And then CMD is the command or the program that it will open. The reason some of these don't have icons yet is because they aren't installed on the computer yet. Or the icon file is not saved in the proper directory. So for the sake of this video, I already have all of these programs downloaded. And once again, it is saved in the ultimate Windows customization folder. If you head to the context folder and then to tools, you'll see all of the programs are saved here. So I'm going to be copying everything except the shell and notepad folder as we've already installed that. I'm going to copy that over to the tools folder we created on local disk C and I'm going to paste it there. Now, most of these are fixed, but the this PC and the snipping tool is still missing the icons. So that is saved in the Nilesoft shell folder in the icons folder that I created. So we can go ahead and copy that into the Nilesoft shell folder we have on the local disk C. Now, after doing that, if we have a look at the right click menu, we can see that all the icons are here now. And if I click on any of these apps, they will launch. For example, if I click on this PC, it'll open up a new instance of this PC. Now, these are programs that I use and many of you might find useful. The list is inspired by Microsoft Power Toys. Now, if you don't know what Power Toys is, it's essentially a compilation of tools that can come in very handy. You have stuff like mouse utilities. You also have Power Toys Run, which is a quick launcher with additional capabilities. And you also have a text extractor, which is an OCR tool. And I added these apps to the right click menu. So let's start with a flow launcher. If you do get this prompt about Python, you can just click no and click on cancel. Now flow launcher is running. So if I open up flow launcher, it'll give me this box, which I can type anything into to quickly launch it. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to head back to the tools folder. We're going to go into the everything folder. We're going to open up everything. If you get this prompt, just run as administrator. From here, we're going to click on tools, then options. And we're going to check the setting that says start everything on startup and everything service. Click apply and then OK and then exit out of this. Next, let's open up Flow Launcher. 
right click in this box select settings and here you have some settings which you can change in flow launcher i'll leave that for another video but for now head to the plugins tab head to explorer and here you're going to make sure that all of these search engines are set to everything you're going to click on everything setting and you're just going to make sure that this everything path is correct and set to where everything is installed if you don't know what everything is it's just a tool that locates files and folders by name instantly it's essentially a lot faster than the windows search so essentially if you want anything on your computer or if you want to search the internet for anything you can just right click anywhere on your computer select flow launcher and whatever you want you can start typing into this launcher and you can search your computer or you can search the internet which will open a new tab in your browser you can use a flow launcher as a calculator and you can also copy this number to, to the clipboard and use it wherever you like so next up i have this pc which is just an easy way to get to this pc and then navigate to any other folder you need to i have the snipping tool which you can use to take screenshots or screen recordings of your screen i have text grab and text grab is basically the same utility that microsoft power toys uses and once you launch it you'll get this screen i recommend keeping it on full screen and just scrolling down on this page until you find the ok button now this will instantly launch the text grab application and what you can do is let's select this text the text we just selected is now copied to the clipboard and I can now right click and either open notepad plus plus or notepad that's why both of them are here depends on what you prefer to use but let's open notepad and then I can paste the text we just grabbed with the text grabber tool next up on this list is a color picker now not everyone might use this but I do use it quite a lot to get certain colors for designs and I do find it quite helpful when I want a certain color and i don't have the hex code so the way this works is you can just click on the pick color tool and you can choose any color on the screen from here you can copy this hex code or copy the rgb code and use it in your designs or wherever you need to use the colors that you see on screen lastly i have a browser tab that takes me straight to google now this is probably one of the shortcuts i don't use that much I prefer just to launch Flow Launcher and then immediately type my search query into Flow Launcher, which gives me the option to search it on Google. And you might argue that none of these tools aren't on the right click menu as I can just use Flow Launcher to launch all of them. But personally, I like using it this way. Preference, and I'm sharing it with you, maybe you also find value from it. It is worth mentioning that a Flow Launcher also has a keyboard shortcut. Uh, by default, it's set to Alt and Spacebar. I set mine to Control and Space, so I can also launch it by clicking Control and Space on the keyboard and then typing in whatever I need. So lastly, I just want to show you how you can add a program to this right-click menu. So we're going to head to the Tools folder or wherever you installed the Nilesoft shell application you're going to edit this shell nss file just as an example let's say i wanted to add onedrive to the bottom of this list i would copy this entire line of code and then paste it into a new line i would change the title to whatever i'm adding in this case it's onedrive after changing the title i need to find the file path for the image as well as the command to launch the application so this is what i like about classic shell if i head into all programs and i find the program on this menu i can right click on it then open file location so this is the onedrive application and here is where shells built in file management shortcuts come in handy as you can go to the file management tab and then copy path and you can copy this entire path to the application that you want to add to the shell menu so I'll just delete the file path for the image. Make sure you don't delete those parentheses. So this is for the image, which will be the icon. And then for the command, we'll also replace that with the application we want to add. 
and then we can remove these arguments as that's only needed in the browser. So make sure it looks exactly like this. Then you can save this file by hitting control and save. Now after doing that, we need to restart file explorer. The easiest way to do that is to hold down shift on your keyboard, then right click on the taskbar, head to the shell menu and then to manager and then click on restart explorer. And once that's done, you'll see the program you added to the list will now be showing on this menu. So if I click on OneDrive, it'll now launch OneDrive. Obviously, I'm not going to be using OneDrive, so I'm going to be removing it. But this was just an example to show you how to edit the shell configuration file in case you wanted to add one of your own items to the right click menu. So now we have a brand new mouse cursor. We have a cool animated desktop background. We customized the start menu, the start button and the taskbar. We created our own custom right click menu and we discovered some new free tools in the process. What more can we do? If there's something you want to customize in Windows and don't know how, let me know by leaving a comment about it and I'll see if I can help. And I really hope you found something of value in this video and if you did, Remember to give it a like and comment and subscribe for more tech tips. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch. See you in the next video.